my loves, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. We're back in familiar territory, back in Melbourne. Today, I'm gonna do a speed paint video of my latest tarot card deck. If you guys are new here, I am doing a tarot card project. Uh, I made a video about that last time I posted. And if you guys aren't familiar with all of that, I'll leave a playlist in the description so you can catch up on what this project's all about. But really, I'm just trying to accomplish making a tarot card deck as a huge feat. And I wanna show you guys every step of the way because it is a really big project and I just feel like it's pretty interesting to see the behind the scenes of such a ginormous project. So today I'm going to be painting the world. I really liked this card. I liked the surreal aspects of the card and I really liked the four icons in the corner as well, her floating in the middle. But yeah, uh, let's head into the video and talk about this card. Alrighty, everybody, let's get into the world. <laughs> so when um, I was researching the world, uh, by the way, every all the links that I use to research this card will be in the show notes if you guys want to read up a little bit more about tarot. But when I was researching it, uh, the world represented an ending to a cycle of life. Uh, a phase in life has been completed or paused. So I kind of loved um, just the idea of this card. I feel like there's so many things in life for me, maybe, uh, well, like personally for me, I feel like there's so many things that are continuously going on. Um, so, you know, constantly trying to make art, constantly trying to make videos. And I feel like I never get any kind of like finite finished uh, you know, full stop on a lot of things in my life. So, um, I don't know, this, this card feels like really satisfying to me. I feel like I should have maybe, um, saved this one for the very end, but, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I know it doesn't quite play out that well, but anyway. So I'm just going to talk about, uh, a couple of the stylistic choices that I made and like the symbolism of the card. Um, before I talk about more of the technical painting aspects of it. When I was researching, I saw there was a woman, or it can be kind of a genderless figure in the middle. Um, I chose a woman, and I'll tell you guys why in a bit. Uh, and this figure in the middle is meant to be a... She's meant to symbolize a balance and evolution in movement. So she does have like lots of movement in her body because um, that movement's meant to represent something that is not static. So it's something that's ever changing, um, really dynamic and eternal. Um, and I think, yeah, when I was researching, she has to be looking back to the past as well, but her body is facing forward. So yeah, kind of acknowledging your past and present. This is how I'm taking it anyway. Um, and I chose instead, if you look at the Rider Waite deck, uh, she normally has a wreath around her body. Um, but I, you know, when I was researching, I saw that an Ouroboros, an Ouroboros, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, <laughs> an Ouroboros, you know, those snaky dragon things that continuously eat their tail. I wanted to do something like that instead. Uh, just for me, a wreath just really didn't speak to me and another creature spoke a lot more. Um, I've always really loved this symbol. There's something like satisfying about it. So it's like um, an Ouroboros is uh, like a cyclical nature of the universe. So creation out of destruction, life and death. Um, I feel like that's why so many people get an Ouroboros tattooed on them because it's like, ooh, edgy, life and death, things completing one another, one cannot exist without the other. Uh, and I just felt like it was really appropriate for what this card really means. And I, <laughs> I, I liked just his weird sneakiness. I had a little bit of trouble uh, putting the scales on. I just... A lot of the problem and what takes me the most time with painting nowadays is trying to figure out the texture. Uh, sorry, I'm kind of bleeding into the technical aspects um, before finishing uh, the meaning of the card, but um, I'm just looking at it now and I just want to talk about it now. Um, 
making choices on what the textures should be in paintings is really difficult. I feel like I need to play around and experiment with a few more textures, but I'm kind of always working it out when I'm painting uh, because I've kind of figured out all the line work and the movement and the composition. Um, and I've also figured out the colors, the textures are always the last thing for me to be choosing. So um, just so you guys, uh, I know a lot of you guys watch my videos for the technical reasons, not specifically, you know, the stories behind the art. So um, I do find for me recently planning a lot of pieces has just proved to be a lot faster and just so much more satisfying because I'm not playing around with composition, yada, yada. Um, anyway, that's just what I, that's the mindset that I was going through when I was painting this piece. Um, going to the four symbols on the corners. So there's a lion, um, which is a fire sign, a bull or a calf, um, which is an earth sign, a man, which is an Aquarius. I chose a woman. I don't, I'm probably going to put a lot of a lot more females in this deck um, rather than males. I will be putting a few um, men in my deck, but uh, I just for me, it felt better like she represents Aquarius a bit more to me than um, a man. And then the last one is an eagle, which is meant to be a water sign. Um, I still get really confused with a lot of that stuff because it doesn't seem particularly logical. Um, for me, I chose, I wanted to stick with uh, all of the symbols that were naturally there. And I didn't really want to mix up, mix them up with like different kinds of creatures just because I knew that they were tied very specifically to, um, you know, horoscopes and being a water sign and air sign etc so for me I just I didn't feel like it felt right for me to kind of mix that up and change it just because it it's already pretty confusing for me so I just needed to like keep it the way it is um I also when I was researching and reading about it I felt like um a lot of connections to the fifth element uh if you guys have seen that movie a lot of it is about you know all the four elements coming together and then um Lilu's character the main lady in it uh is like the final piece to it all so um I wanted to pay a little homage to her with the hair color and kind of a couple of the straps the bondage straps as well nodding back to that movie as well um I love how rounded and balanced this card is, uh, mostly for not not on a visual level, but on a uh, symbolic level. Um, the balance of it just feels really satisfying. I get so much satisfaction from like how finite this card is. And I mean, you know, those kind of moods and that those feelings. I want to feel really passionate about that sort of stuff when I'm making this deck so that kind of translate and that that energy translates as well when you're doing readings with it so I hope I've nailed it um, you guys let me know if I have um, yeah I also tried to color match this card as much as possible to the Sun if you guys remember me painting that um, but yeah feels balanced in context and feels balanced in color. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, what other symbols would you have used for the four corners? Um, what's your interpretation of all the different signs? Okay, you guys, here's the final card. I'm super pumped on it and I'm just really loving the colors of this piece. I tried to color match it as much as possible to the sun. I don't know what else to say, except I just really want to get into the other ones. When you can see them all together, it's just really exciting and I'm excited to get into the next card. All right, you guys, I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you like the video and subscribe and press that bell as well. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Catch you later. Bye. I'm
trying this new thing where I'm gonna do a little chatty chat at the end of the videos, kind of catch you guys up on random things that are happening in the world of Zeke's lunchbox. I also want to feature a lot of your artwork because you guys tag me in a lot of work that is inspired by my work and I just want to show it off and not just post it on Instagram, you know? So if you do post on Instagram, make sure you hashtag it inspired by Zeke and I will feature you at the end of the video. All right, so this artwork here is by This Is Gertrude. She did a makeup look inspired by the sun, which is, ugh, the colors. I mean, I'm kind of talking myself up because I did those colors, but you know what I mean. It looks incredible. Thank you so much. If you guys do something similar, artworks, makeup, fashion looks, what have you, please tag me. I'd love to see it. All right, thank you. Bye.